56 games is the number to make the TV Stepladder Finals. It's the U.S. Women's Open. We're on the road. Let's get it. Welcome to PWBA On The Road, Episode 8. This is Week 8 of the 2018 PWBA Tour season. My name is Emil Williams, Jr. Pleased to be here with you and pleased to be back. Big thanks to Jason Thomas for filling in for me. Last week, the U.S. Women's Open, it's here. We're ready. 56 games for the five players who will make the TV Stepladder Finals. That'll take place, of course, June 30th, 5 p.m. Eastern on CBS Sports Network. A couple champions in the field this week. Leanne Holsenberg, Kelly Kulik, part of the show. We'll talk to them uh, and get their thoughts on why this event is so important, of course, and what it takes to win the U.S. Women's Open. We'll talk to Liz Johnson. We'll go one-on-one -on -one with the great one. She's won the last four U.S. Women's Open titles, looking for five in a row. Can she do it? It'll be a fun week to watch. But first, let's travel back in time where the future of the PWBA Tour was on display as Jordan Richard, claimed her first PWBA title last week at the Greater Harrisburg Open. Oh, goodness. Uh, I didn't really think a whole lot about it. Um, I just kind of sat there and did my own thing and didn't really worry about what they were doing because I knew that what they did wasn't going to affect what I did. So I, can, I had to control what I could control and let them do what they want and then just see how it all played out after that. Needs all three of them. Gets one and O'Keefe is in the championship match. I saw the lanes completely different, both of them. Looking to set the tone. They kind of, I played a little further right than I had been all week. I started a little further left, but that didn't allow it. So I was playing a different part of the lane, so it was, wasn't too bad. Fifth frame, looking for three in a row. So we tried some different things in practice. We went off that and I played them a few boards different. And then when I split in the fifth, I threw it left off my hand, so I knew it was a bad shot. And then, so I moved off of it and went from there. Any type of mark here. Just her fourth PWBA Tour event, Jordan Richard, become a PWBA champion. Um, I, I wanted to make a good shot. I knew I didn't need to strike, but I knew I needed a good shot at least. Looks pretty good. Great shot. I mean, that's, that's, <laughs> that was rock solid right there. So I was trying to keep my emotions in check and I just threw a good shot and it fell my way this time. So I'm excited. I sure as heck didn't expect a win out here this soon, but it's definitely, it's humbling. 222 to 194, Jordan Richard. The 2018 PWVA Greater Harrisburg Open Champion. Yep. I just kind of played my own game. I did what was best for me. I stayed patient, and that was the biggest thing that I wanted to focus on going into these tournaments was being patient. I knew that I wasn't gonna come out here and win right away. These girls are phenomenal, and they're hard to beat. So I knew that I just had to stay patient and my time would come, and once you knock on that door once, and it just comes down eventually. So it went my way this time. It's not always gonna go my way, but I'm very excited. This, this is just as much mine as it is theirs. I mean, they push me every single day to be better and get in the bowling alley and practice, and my mom pounds in my head all the time to be better and this time I was better and it's just it pays off for them just as much as it does me. Congrats again to Jordan Richard, future star of the PWBA Tour, her win at the Greater Harrisburg Open. Speaking of the future, Jordan's career would not be possible without the two players we're going to take a look at next. Kelly Kulik and Leanne Holsenberg, two former champions of the U.S. Women's Open. They tell you why this event is so important right now. Um, the U.S. Open is my favorite event. Um, I also think it's the greatest event that we have in bowling. Uh, there's a lot of games. It's an all week, different conditions. There's like a lot of different things. You know, the elite players, you know, everyone bowls the U.S. Open. We've had fields that there's been 300 entries. This week we have a smaller elite field, but it's still the best of the best. 
A, B, and C squad, then you cut, you bowl eight more, and then you cut, you bowl 24 more. So 56 games is like my dream tournament. So it's a marathon, which I love. Crowd picking up behind you. There's your champion. Yeah, that was a great week. That was one of our tournaments that we had 300 entries. I think it was the first U.S. Open where we had so many different countries represented. So it really felt like, you know, the best event ever. And then to be fortunate enough to make the finals and go to the biggest venue ever um, was pretty cool. And it was extra special for me because it was my first TV finals being married and having a child. So I had my husband and my son there. And it was just, it was really, really cool and uh, something our family will always remember. It's, it's my favorite tournament, so I think I'll watch a little bit, you know, and you get to see different, you know, uh, lane conditions. The A squad's going to play one way, B squad, and then transition. So, I mean, there's a lot of different factors to pay attention to. Um, in a lot of tough things, you know, you can only pick eight bowling balls out of you know, my, my arsenal had 15 this week, so I've got to kind of weed out ones that I think will, you know, you got to predict things, you got to anticipate things. So it's, you have to think a lot this week, and it's something different every day. And there is a second at U.S. Women's Open Championship for Kelly Kulik on top of the Queens and the Men's Tournament of Champions. Kelly Kulik. An amazing year in 2010. You look at all the sports and the levels of competition, and when you're going for that major title, the one that stands out the most is the U.S. Open. It's the longest format. Most often it's one of the largest fields. It is the toughest conditions to win on. So when you bank one of those titles on your resume, you are the upper class of the classman itself. This event means a lot to me. I've had a lot of success. Three first, three seconds led it by many amount of pins, got to bullet in Dallas Cowboy Stadium for a second place finish. Um, but everyone's equal. Everyone has the same opportunity. But the person that walks away with the green jacket this week will be remembered in bowling history. If I were to rank my US Open wins, uh, it would have to be my first one in 2003. I was a rookie on tour for, for two years. Came to me in my third season. I beat Carolyn Doran Ballard for the title. Michelle Feldman, Wendy McPherson, and Leanne Barrett at the time. Pretty a nostalgic group of, of ladies right there. That would be first. The second one would have to be in Reno, outdoors, the environment, the conditions, desert storm, what I won on that with a, with a Maxim Plastic Spare Ball. And then finally in 2010 was a fairy tale princess storyline from winning the TSC, the Queens, and the Open all in the same year. And there is a second at U.S. Women's Open Championship for Kelly Kulik. I think the, the person that's the most level throughout the whole week will be the one that makes it to the show. And then from there, it's just being a smart bowler. But mentally, this event is more draining and grueling than it is physically to the body. All right, we just talked to a couple champions, Leanne Holsenberg, Kelly Kulik. They have won this event. And now we get a chance to chat with their roommate uh, for this week. And that is Liz Johnson, of course, the winner of the last four U.S. Women's Opens and six overall. First, thank you for being uh, joining us on the road. Thank you for having me. It's uh, it's awesome to have you. Of course, we've chatted us several times in the past, but uh, you know, maybe not directly about the U.S. Women's. Kind of want to start here. Uh, second major of the season, one obviously you're very familiar with. But uh, when you think about the event, what makes it so unique in that sense? Uh, you know, a lot of players talk about this is the most prestigious. Uh, what makes it so unique and so prestigious in that? Uh, it's, it's a long format. You know, the U.S. Open is, is a great history of, of champions. And, and um, I love the long format, the, the lot of games, uh, the challenging conditions, whether they're high scoring or low scoring, uh, it's always very challenging. Um, even at high scoring, you got to keep up with, with the field. So it can be uh, just that. And just, um, you know, just a, a lot of games. And, makes it very difficult so uh, anybody can win. What's the most difficult part about it, if, if there is, an, is one thing? I know from a mental perspective, there's a lot to, to keep track of, and you, know, you got to stay patient. But uh, yeah. perhaps what is the most difficult thing, or maybe in the times that you've bolted, what's been the most difficult thing you've had to manage? Um, just try to manage the, uh, the stress level of, you know, 
you have a lot of you can have a lot of bad games right. out there. You a lot of a lot of good games. And just try for me, just trying to keep an even tempo emotionally and, and physically. And uh, you know, you have a bad game, you come back from it. You have a good game, you just keep going. And you try not to look too far ahead. You know, you take one game one day at a time. And uh, you know, you have one great day. You know, you still gotta you still gotta keep that one one at a time. In the last few years, uh, I feel like you've ran the ladder, for example, on, on TV, and you've had a you had to make sure you make the cut, for example. But we've seen plenty of times where all you need to do is just make the cut, uh, and, and you can kind of turn it on and beat Liz Johnson. But what is it about Liz you know, in that regard that allows you to to turn it on when you need to, or you know, why are you so tough in these situations? Um, I think I, I always fight. You know, I fight to the very end. You know, I could be down. You know, in the past, I've had some of the U.S. Open where, I, you know, I was up there and I fell down, or I was always out of it. Right. And uh, I always felt like I could never count myself out. You know, just try to always keep a good attitude and always know that, you know, you can. There's a better score. Right. There's a better day. And uh, just try to keep be positive and uh, knowing that um, I'll never quit until the very last shot is thrown. Uh, whether we're going 10 games, we're going 50 games, um, I'm, I'm never quitting until, until we're that last spare ball or strike strike ball thrown. Okay, you've won the last four. Uh, I mean, did you ever think that you could win four in a row, especially no, the U.S. Women's no. Open? I mean, to dream to to win one, you know, was it was pretty magical for me. Um, to be sitting here and knowing I have, I have six under my belt and winning the last four, um, I mean, I never would have thought. That so it's it's pretty awesome. It's a great feeling, and knowing I can still do this, and hopefully I can continue to do this uh, this week uh, at a higher level. The first one you won was in 1996, which we're not dating you. <laughs> I was 22 back then. I think a lot of the girls weren't even born yet. But um, yeah, it was it was pretty magical. It was uh, Indianapolis, Indiana, 96, and it was at the Market Square Arena, which is where the show was, and that was probably my first arena setting. So that was uh, that was up the ladder, you know, and against you know some amazing stars. So what uh, what do you remember most about the, the finals, you know, perhaps in that sense, or something that was that has stuck with you uh, throughout that week, the, the first one that you've won to this point? Just the, the just the atmosphere. It was an arena finals. Uh, it was Carol Norman, Tish Johnson, Marianne Rupo was in the finals, and you just. And it was uh, simultaneously men, men versus men, right. the women, and uh, that that's what was so awesome. Is we got to bowl with the guys as well, and and it was um, you know the arena, and it just everyone it was it was just an unbelievable setting. Okay. Very All right, high so, so help me out. Make sure I got it right. So 96. 96. 2007. Yes. 13. 13. 15. 15. 16. 17. Yes. Uh, if you could rank the wins, which is difficult, yeah. uh, maybe you may, maybe the first three or four, if you could rank them, where would you rank them and why? There, I mean, each one of them is so special. It's just, uh, that's an apple to an orange to a banana, you know. <laughs> um, 07 was different because we, we qualified and, and I think made the top four in like July uh -huh. or June. And then we came back in October, or it was August to October. So that was a little different format. Uh, 2013 was in Columbus, Ohio, and we bowled in three different centers. So I think that's the one and only time we've ever done that. Okay. So as far as the difficulty wise, I mean, that had to be uh, my sure. top, right. top two uh, by far. And then uh, the one in 2016 was in Addison, Illinois, right. and uh, which was actually very close to home for me at the time. And it was, I was out of it. I was out of it by a lot, and I had a couple bad nights, and somehow I pulled myself out of it and had a little help from from my ball reps and 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 other people, and um, somehow I. You know, that, that was one of those ones where I did fight to the very end and I got there. Somehow I got into the show and I, and I made up the ladder. So that was probably my top one as far as the most difficult. And then the other challenging was the Columbus, the Columbus Ohio. 
You mentioned you mentioned home, which is now different. Yes. Of course, uh, yeah. most fans know and uh, very yeah. familiar with Chick for right. example. But right. you're now living in the Chicagoland area, Palatine, for example. Right. Right. Uh, so just briefly, kind of talk about where you are in life in that regard. Where you know you made a change from you know, a place you're very familiar with, obviously right. in New York, to right. Chicagoland area at this point. So you know, how's that transition been for you? Uh, and, and what do you love most about that? It's. Uh, Palatine's an awesome place. It's an awesome town, as you, you're familiar with. I am, yes. And uh, it's just, everything's uh, similar in certain ways, but, you know, the traffic and stuff, you got to be a little more patient. <laughs> right. Maybe that helps me out here, too. But uh, I'm enjoying life, you know. I'm enjoying, uh, I got married in January 8th this year, uh, and just enjoying oh my, my gosh. home. <laughs> Kasha's, Kasha's working in New Jersey this week, so she can't be here, unfortunately. But, you know, we have a great home, great life, and uh, that, that makes it more difficult at times when you're able to go home and sometimes it's hard to get back on the road. So I try to, uh, from a mental, emotional standpoint, it makes it a little more difficult. But, you know, I still love to bowl. This, this is my job, but I still love it. And, um, you know, that makes coming home that much more enjoyable and be able to enjoy the home life. But for now, you know, you got you still have a job to do out here. Uh, you're rooming with Kelly Kulik and Leanne Holstenberg. We had a chance to speak with them, and they're part of our On the Road episode this week. Uh, so, you know, for any fan, I would think that would be, if you could have three people to, to spend a day with, that would, you certainly would be one of those three people. That trio would be great. Yeah. Um, you know, how does that how does that roommate situation kind of work out for you? And then obviously the experience and the amount of titles that you guys have between you. Yeah. Um, you know, how do you make that or help that to your advantage in some capacity by rooming with two players that you know very well, two friends? Yeah, it, it, you know, they're they're the two of the most easygoing people. You know, uh, I've roomed with Kelly a few times. I've never roomed with Leanne, but everyone's pretty easygoing. We all love, you know, we have our big mug of coffee in the morning and, and uh, we have a lot of similarities and stuff like that but everyone's pretty easy going but you know to be around you know pretty much being around greatness and, right. and two of the greatest female bowlers ever you know, I grew up watching Leanne and that's one of the reasons why I'm doing what I, I was doing for the last you know 20 years so um, just to be in that company and having that good positive energy and um, they're two of the great greatest ladies of all time on and off the Speaking of the greatest, a lot of people now have deemed you the greatest bowler of all time. Um, when you hear that, you know, what does it, what does that make you feel? How do you feel when you hear it? Uh, I know obviously you're still bowling and yeah. uh, you still got an opportunity to kind of solidify that, that status for, for a lot of people's opinions. But when you hear it, what does it mean to you? Are you the greatest, do you think, at this point? You know, I, I, I grew up with watching so many of the greatest bowlers and then to me I'm you know I I don't feel like I am you know I, but you know it's it's also it's an awesome compliment and uh, I'm very humble and, and you know when you have I was just in Syracuse and watching everyone bowl and uh, had a lot of people come up to me and you know pictures and, and stuff like that right, and, right. you know it's just an awesome compliment and um, I feel very I'm very lucky to be able to do um, everything as long as I've been able to do. And even the last probably couple of weeks, it's pretty cool where you get maybe some of the younger girls say, how do you stay, how do you not get down? How do you, do you have a great mental game? And you just try to keep a positive attitude and, and you just, you know, you try not to, try not to get too down about things. You know, you just try to, and again, I, I've just been, lucky I, I was born and raised around great people right. and great surroundings a great family and great parents and uh, you know you just try to just keep doing what you do and then uh, try not to let it go to your head and um, just, just keep a positive attitude right. all, at all times because you never know when you're not going to be able to do this right. I was at that point back in 2003 when it just left us sure. and uh that's why I may sound sometimes like a broken record when I say, you know, I, you know, you never know when this is, right. you know, going to happen again. But you really don't, and you don't know when it's going to take it, taken away from you. Whether it's not having a tour or something happens, you get hurt, God forbid. Or um, so you just take every little bit of it, and you know, uh, 
don't, you know, they don't take anything for granted. So finally, this week, you know, you got a chance to win five in a row. No one's ever done that. You know, by the way, it's you and Marion Ladewick who have won four in a row. If you can win five, and you try not to think ahead, obviously, but, you know, just how do you, you know, prepare yourself for the week and, and get through the week, and then if you happen to make the show and give yourself another opportunity and you win it, um, you know, how do you keep all of that kind of centered to be the best Liz Johnson you can be? I just keep one foot in front of the other and, and uh, take tomorrow, tomorrow, Tuesday goes, starts on Tuesday, and not, not think to... Is there going to be a Thursday or is there going to be a Friday? Is there going to be a Saturday? You know, I just have one foot in front of the other and um, just focus on what's in front of me 60 feet and uh, that's all I can do. And, you know, I'm not going to worry about anything else. I can't worry about anybody else. i got to worry about me. It's always a pleasure. I uh, appreciate you. you talking to Thanks me. Thanks for having Thank me. Thank you. Uh, and for everyone else, of course, well, you can watch Liz Johnson this week, uh, all week, the U.S. Women's Open on Extra Frame. Uh, coverage starts Monday morning at 8 a.m. Uh, in fact, Liz is bowling the A squad, so you can see her bright and early at 8 a.m. Uh, Eastern time. So we look forward to having a great week. Don't forget the live TV finals will be on CBS Sports Network next Saturday, June 30th at 5 p.m. Eastern time. And of course, there's a pretty good chance you might see this young lady to my left. Uh, we'll certainly see how things play out. So for everyone involved today, for Liz Johnson, Jason Thomas, Jason McEwen, and Jeff Goodger, my name is Emil Williams, Jr. Appreciate everyone. This is episode 8, PWBA on the road. Look forward to seeing your coverage this week. We'll see you.